Andrew, is this the biggest ever episode of, of We're Live, pal, that we're about to have in I the mean, history of the show? I mean, show? we got the biggest biceps in professional wrestling media on, so yeah, <laughs> it has to be the biggest show that we've done uh, on uh, for uh, We're Live, pal. We are welcoming Dave Meltzer onto the show. We're going to take some super chats with Dave, so if you have any questions, as I said, the only question you cannot ask is how many Ultimate Warriors that there were. Uh, <laughs> if you if you want to ask Dave pretty much anything, send us a super chat. We'll put it in the Q and A. Dave, what's going on? Ah, just working on the issue like usual. You know, there's a lot of uh, you know. I mean, there's a lot of interesting things coming off of last night's show, and we'll see kind of where they uh, go from here. Okay, I, I thought last night was awesome. The yeah, one most people thing- did. Yeah. The one thing, and you know, Andrew's a little bit younger than me, even, but I was kind of interested in what you guys thought because I was watching The Rock very closely in that last segment as he was beating down Cody. I sensed, you know, as somebody who has bad knees myself, I was like, oh, he's pretty, gin- he's kind of walking around gingerly here. And it made me wonder, you know, the guy is, you know, in his, in his early 50s, but he's got, I don't know how much he weighs. He's 51, and um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I'm going to guess he weighs closing in on 260. Um, yeah, I know he when he looks was, every it, bit of it. When he was yeah. at his biggest, when he was at his biggest, I think he was, um, uh, you know, a bodybuilder biggest, not not pro wrestler biggest. When he was a football player, he was much more than 260 as a lineman. But I think when he was at his bodybuilder biggest, he was 260 ish, and he would tell me that he was 220 when he was acting. I thought he was actually lighter than that, maybe 215 to 220. So, yeah, it's a lot of um, – this would be in the, um, you know, early you know the, the early stages of his acting career when he was trying to, you know, and how he got that light. You know, I mean, he must have eaten very, very carefully and everything. But he had gotten – if you guys remember, he'd gotten very, very light, still muscular and still worked out hard. But, um, you know, he wanted to not be – so big and overpowering on the screen until he started doing the action figure thing. And then we did the action figure thing. He went completely in the other direction. I mean, just crazy. Yeah. Yeah. It worked out tremendously for him too, because he's yeah, never yeah, been a bigger star than he is today. Probably, yeah. you know, the last couple of years, I would say, last, but you know, yeah. I mean, and since the fast and uh, furious franchise, I mean, I think that that took him to a, you know, and then Hobbs and Shaw, I think, and all that. But all that, all those movies did giant box office, yeah. But did you see the same thing that I did, which is he was sort of being very careful in his you movement? Know, I, was, I, I, I can't, I can't say. You know, I was watching, and I, I, I was, you know, it was like it wasn't a red flag by any means, but I did see enough to go, you know, yeah, he's he's fifty one. You know what I mean? He's 51 and he doesn't move like, uh, a, you know, 30, 35 year old or 30 year old. And he's not going to. Um, but but I, you know, like I have questions, um, you know, on how he's going to do. Um, but I also know that he's smart enough and they're smart enough and everything like this that I have no doubt it's going to be a success. You know, I, I mean, he's not in there to do a, a Will Ospreay match or a brian danielson match he's out there to do something different and you know he will do i, I believe he will do just fine with it but i mean as far as like um you know are you going to see the quickness that you saw you know when he came out of college football and everything like that and it's like you know no no, no matter what you do nobody in the world's going to be as quick when they're 51 as they are when they were 28 26 now I want to give him a little bit of the benefit of the doubt in that it was raining outside and he was wearing hard bottom shoes. So I imagine yeah, that, doesn't, that, that, that doesn't help either. Yeah. The chance yeah. of so somebody I asked, I asked this morning, I asked this morning, uh, someone over there and I said, what was, because I noticed it too. You know, he was, he wasn't really, I, I, somebody said to me, he was moving like he was in the video game, WWF, no mercy. <laughs> or it was like kind of like robotic the old, the old game you know, the and you know when i noticed yeah. it when he when he threw the when he when he hit cody with the trash can he was very stiff and i and i asked him like "Ooh, he was moving stiff and he goes dude he's wearing loafers yeah. there's no yeah. there's no he, he doesn't want to fall and this was someone that was there so i don't know i hope that's the reason because he looks it's actually 
you know, that final boss moniker that they've given him is so accurate. He really looks like he is the final boss of a video game. He's gigantic and cartoonish in the in all the best ways. Uh, and what a I felt that this was a very different show compared to, you know, uh, even six oh, months yeah. ago. It oh, was yeah. oh, yeah. very but different. It's, it's, the, the verbiage. It's, it's, it's very talk heavy because we're going into WrestleMania and long talk heavy because you've got between Punk and McIntyre and Rollins and Cody and and Dwayne. You know, you've got talk. I mean, they're building the whole show around talkers right now. And, um, you know, and, and, and because that's where the strength is, you know, even with Rock on and WrestleMania being over, I think that, you know, I mean, I just know when I do recaps of the show, it is so much different because I'm recapping talk segment and talk segment and talk segment. And the matches are, you know, it used to be the matches were, and the, and the talk segments was kind of like even in the sense the talk segments were important, but matches were important. And now the matches on Raw seem very unimportant, you know, when you discuss the show afterwards. And it's the talk segments, um, or in the case, the angle at the end of the show that are the important stuff. And I mean, people don't even remember the matches the next day they just remember what people said in the interactions and you know you know words in the thing and insider terms and things like that you know i i, I actually wanted to ask you this because you you've been tracking this for decades and coming from the attitude era you had two three minute matches that nothing happens interference and that that was kind of the flow for most yeah. of monday night yeah. raw it was very quick hitting matches regarding sustainability right is the sustainability in talking segments over long matches or is it to do a blend of the shorter matches? Because uh, what this is saying is, you know, the modern audience, the modern WWE audience doesn't really have longevity for a three hour show to have long matches. And we're seeing that now where they're going more talk based. Um, it depends on the performers. You go to the strength of what you have. If you've got good talkers, do a lot of talking. If you've got good wrestlers, you can do longer matches. I mean, they did. They did the the ricochet match was long. I mean, it was interesting. Jey Uso and Nakamura in the main event spot was very short for a main event. But there's a reason for that. You know, I mean, it wasn't the main event. The main event was the brawl afterwards, which went very, which went really long for that type of a, of a thing. But, you know, I mean, the deal is, is that they want Dwayne on as much minute by minute time as they can get him on because they know that those minutes he's on, people are going to tune in and it's going to be higher and it's going to be more entertaining. And, um, you know, the one thing that, that's happened, though, is that he has overshadowed everyone, I think, except for Cody, because Cody's the rival. So he's been brought up, I think, by Dwayne. But everybody else, Roman Reigns is, is, is much more secondary than I thought going into this WrestleMania, you know, and, and everyone else is just they're just guys on the show. You know, I mean, I think McIntyre's done a good job um, and, and Rollins, but everybody else to me is just guys on the show and, and rocks the the big, big star by, by leaps and bounds now. What, what do you think about the variety of that show, though? Because like you mentioned, you have like the, the stars, stars, and the Cody segments uh, when he's actually talking, uh, those seem to do really well in the ratings, almost always the peak of the show as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, they put him, they put him at nine, and nine's going to be the peak. But, but um, yeah, I mean, Cody and Punk um, are, are definite draws as far as um, – you know, guys, you know, Roman Reigns is a draw, um, Rock's a draw, and the rest, it's just the statement you're put in. You know, some people, you know, if you put, you know, Candice LeRae in, yeah, the, the audience will drop during that segment, but, you know, it, it's just going to happen. Um, but those, to me, those are the ones where I really see, um, you know, noticeable difference. You know, I mean, it's very much, um, you know, I mean, there's a base audience, but there is very much... Um, the few stars that really move the audience right now, you know, the, you know, a few on each show. Yeah. But it does seem like the stars are in the biggest angles and they're doing the talking. And then you're putting on a wrestling match underneath. Cause when I went to raw, gosh, when was this uh, last month? I think, I, I think there was like two or three really good actual wrestling matches in the mix of the talking segments and the show seemed to flow fairly well. But w I mean, kind of going back to what Andrew was saying about the Attitude Era, when the talking segments, you know, you'd open up Raw and it's like 20 minutes of, of talking. Um, the, the, it seems like the wrestling is a lot better and they've kind of tried to balance it out. Like, do you 
uh, when you as you watch Raw today, do you think it's a better show because of that? Well, it's a better show because you got better talkers. I don't think it's like a um, you know what I mean. It's like um, you know, it, the, it's it's all dependent. The show is dependent on the quality of the people you feature. You know, if you have you have all kinds of good wrestlers, you can do long matches, and it will it will be okay to a degree. I mean, one of the things that has happened though in the last you know I would say three years is because of the preponderance of great matches on television, like nothing ever in the history of wrestling in this country, the, the, you know, it's, it's like, you know, eating Kobe beef every day. You know what I mean? After a while, it's like, I mean, at first it's great. After a while, it's like, well, this is just whatever, you know, it's like a great match. I mean, I just remember like when AEW first got on the air and they would put on this great television match and, and the audience would spike and I knew it wouldn't last forever. And it doesn't now. I mean, you could put on the greatest match in the world and people will just, it's like, ah, you know, it's how different is it from the other greatest matches that we see? So, so the great match and same in WWE now, you know, it's, it's, it's all, um, I mean, look, with, with spiking in most cases, occasionally you'll get a world title match on raw that will help the third hour. Um, but they don't overdo that. But most of the time, yeah, you, you look at the nine o'clock and the 10 o'clock and the opening segment, and those are the three big segments of the show, and along with the final segment. Um, but the final segment is never expected to be one of the highest rated ones. It might this week because of rock, but the 8 p.m., 9 p.m., 10 p.m., if you watch most of the time, uh, you're talking about um, interview segments now. So uh, as we uh, get to the Super Chats here in a second, uh, I did want to talk about the CM Punk and Drew McIntyre and Seth Rollins uh, promo. Now, Punk said, we're not on Netflix yet or something, which I think Andrew and I both took to, oh, when they go to Netflix, is it possible that they're going to get a little bit more edgy with the language? Andrew, did you think the same thing? So I, um, you know, I, I kind of, I've been getting that vibe uh, that that we're, we're going based on a vibe. Uh, I've been I've been feeling that they've been doing this. So I reached out. You know, today, and I had a conversation with somebody there, and they answered every question that I had, including stuff I didn't think they would, except for, hey, are you guys going TV 14? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I, you know, it kind of makes sense uh, I'll, 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 where they've I'll, been going I'll, the last couple months. I'll, I'll ask that this afternoon and see what, what it gets. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it makes now, sense. I, I mean, I, listen, they, I, mean, edge, I'm not, long, I don't want them to be the thing, the thing cursing net, net, and yelling. Yeah, Netflix is a long way away, and any decision on Netflix will probably change 15 times between now and January anyway, yeah. because because the company is constantly changing. So, um, but, you know, yeah. I, I mean, I would expect it more edge on Netflix just because of the nature of what you're on. Um, but, you know, no, no, one's, no one has directly told me that. What happened last night, I mean, that's, just, that's Dwayne. You know, I mean, Dwayne's going to do what Dwayne's going to do, and no one's going to tell him no. I mean, for, for anything, he may have to negotiate a little bit, but he's doing what he's going to do. And it's very clear. And, you know, there's some people who resent the fact that there's a double standard, but it's just like, it's, it's always going to be that way. It's the same way in movie. It's not like this is a wrestling thing when it comes to him. I'm sure he gets a lot more of what he wants in a movie than, you know, the other co-stars, you know, it's just, that's just, yeah, the listen, he's the star. He's, he's the, the star. attraction. Totally yeah, the attraction. I mean, you know, but Punk Punk said BS on the show. I mean, they, they censored him, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. They 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 took it out. You know, he dropped it. Uh, I thought that Drew McIntyre and Drew, Punk but, moment. And, 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 and Drew Drew immediately, you know, was like, hey, dude, you know. Not on but I mean, it was, it's, it's obviously, it's obviously like, uh, you know, Punk's going to get leeway too. You know, Cody's going to get leeway. McIntyre will, yeah. although I don't think he's used it. Um, but those type of guys, I mean, it's really interesting to see it's it was Cody more in response to Rock, um, you know Rock obviously getting whatever he wants, and then Punk, and um, you know everybody else. I mean, like nobody else is going to do it. And you know that every single every every LA night and everyone like that, you know, wants that same leeway. And and in time, we will see who gets it and who doesn't. Drew specifically used the word canceled on on the show yeah and i think he yeah. even mentioned the rating of the tv show in another thing in a response he, he mentioned it, when, when punk said something and he just goes we're pg brother yeah 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 uh i yeah. guess you know what i would like to see because i think being crass or edgy for the sake of being crass or edgy is is not helpful 
uh, in this case, no, no, in, 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 in the long, in the long run, um, well, I just, you know, like I say, it, it, does it hurt? And I think, I think in AEW it, it, it's hurt, but AEW is also very different from, from WWE in the sense that WWE has got a, a, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It's got a, um, you know, base, it's got a history and it can, it's got a standing where it can get away with a lot. Whereas AW has a, um, you know, a more critical fan base and it is, it is a secondary group, which makes it only a certain percentage of the audience is going to watch because there's so much of the primary group. And because of that, it's like things that you do. Sometimes you reach, but when you reach, you're turning off, you know, certain parts of the audience, you know, and it's like, I can see, I mean, the one thing that I've noticed, you know, of late with AEW is that, um, you know, the, um, the decline or, or I mean, the lower number of gross viewers of Dynamite um, from, you know, months ago is not fewer homes watching AEW. It's fewer viewers per home. And, you know, the, the, the dynamic, the male and the female and watching together and all that has always been something that AEW had uh, that, you know, did great in from day one. It was actually amazing how great they did. And now they're normal, you know, so that says... Uh, some people have been turned off by, you know, whatever, whatever it is. And they've toned down. I mean, they're not doing as much blood and they're not doing, but once it's done, you know, it's like, it's tough, but, but doing that stuff does have an appeal to guys too. So it's like you, um, it's a balance. Like if you go too far, um, you, you will lose some audience, but at the same time you will, you know, teen, I think teenagers will, will go up if you go really far. But if you have to also be cool, if you're not cool, it doesn't matter what you do. But if you're cool and you're edgy, I mean, it, it can be very good with, with teenagers, especially with younger yeah. adult males and everything. And um, when you're uncool, though, that, that audience is going to drop really fast, too. Yeah, the use. I mean, the cool blood. factor is number one. Yeah, the cool factor yeah. is number one. Uh, and, and you look and at then, WWE and, and, and for the longest time, no, there was they were not cool. They they. They fell off on that coolness, and now the last, you know, whatever whatever month it's been or year it's been, the trajectory has changed. I think it started with the bloodline and Sami Zayn, and and it's just yeah. gone up and up and up since then. You know, with um, just Roman Reigns becoming like a you know a bigger and bigger star, and the rise of Cody Rhodes, um, you know, who's in, incredibly valuable to that show because he's there. He's one of those guys that's carrying that show week after week after week. You know, Roman Reigns is only here, you know, on SmackDown for. You know, whenever sporadic shows, um, you know, and 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 you know, the reality also is is that they are not going to be getting the television audience uh, they were getting when SmackDown leaves Fox. I mean, mm -hmm. it's just not gonna it's not gonna happen unless they just explode or, or Dwayne's a fifty two week a year guy on on uh, SmackDown on USA Network. In which case, yeah, you know, all bets are off. Yeah. Uh, all right, Andrew. Did you want to dig through some of the questions that we do have? So we actually, yeah. Let's do this. Get, get, to, get the this. time to do that. And and folks, if you have them, get them in. We we will get through. If we start now, I think we can get through every single one of those questions. So I, I all right. Let me see handful. this one. Here's one. Did it pop up? Did it? Uh, how do I take this live? <laughs> <laughs> We're live, pal. We're live, pal. I don't know how to get it going. You want to read or it? Our producer maybe could. Yeah. Do you can. Okay. Our producer is doing it. Hang on. I think I have it. In... It's not reading it. Okay, great. <laughs> just that you just, uh, just you, you start reading it. Read it okay. Here's one. Here's from Danny. Many veterans say that one key to wrestling is to maximize your minutes. As a company, do you feel AEW has maximized theirs? Um, you know, AW, it's a very weird situation because I mean, my answer is no. And, and the reason my answer is no is because there's so much, uh, political stuff going on. Um, I mean, they just get, um, hammered for so many things. So they do a lot of things, um, on the TV to satisfy some people that are not maximizing their minutes because they are not with the top people. So, um, yeah, my answer is no. I mean, if it, 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 if it was all about maximizing minutes for excitement and maximizing minutes for, um, um, you know, commercial appeal, um, 
I think that they would be doing different than they were doing. I mean, I, it's not, and that's not a, a criticism at all of Tony Khan. I mean, there's things to criticize Tony Khan about. Don't get me wrong, but yeah, but um, it, it's it's a weird aspect of the current wrestling fan base um, that if you don't do something, um, you know, it's like it's bad and it's and it's wrong. And sometimes that thing that they want is not necessarily a thing that is going to maximize your minutes. I got another one right. here from Robert in the chat. Mr. Meltzer, why do you think WWE can release talent all the time while AEW seems reluctant to do so? That's just the owners. Um, WWE does what it's going to do. And Tony Khan, in his mind, his situation is, is that if I sign you for three years, unless you do something, you know, major, bad, disciplinary, you're here for three years. Whether I use you or not, I'm going to pay you for the three years. With WWE, it's like their feeling is, is that, we got to make talent cuts because we got to keep our profits up. And if we're not using somebody um, and we don't want, and we don't mind him being outside, some people they won't, wouldn't let go because they don't really want them outside. But I think there's less and less of that now um, as far as that fear of handing someone to someone. Um, but um, yeah, in, in, it's just, a, it's just a difference. Like, you know, you sign a three-year contract with WWE and um i mean if you're a top guy i mean i know one, one top guy i'll just give you an example without mentioning his name he was negotiating a deal not all that long ago and you know he wanted and he, he's a top guy and he wanted the, the the deal um got the money that he wanted and then uh, or, or close to the money that he wanted you know um but, but largely you know definitely satisfied with the money and he asked for the three-year deal to be um you know guaranteed no cut right because there are guys in the company and it was just like, no, we're not going to do it. And, but we will never cut you, but it's weird that they hmm. will say we will never cut you without, and, and they, and they won't, um, the guy's too high on the pecking order. He won't, he won't be cut, but it's, it's, it's weird that all you're asking is that you want that deal. Um, you know, uh, basically the deal that you're promised guaranteed for the time that you're signing for, and they would not do that. I mean, there's very, very few people they will do that with. And um, with Tony, it's like it's you know he has the right to cut just just like WWE in the contract. He has the right to cut anyone at any time, but he's just not going to do it. Um, I mean, we saw it. You know, I mean, it's just his, he said it, and I haven't seen uh, one example yet of someone who was cut, um, you know, while having an active contract without a reason. You know, a very significant reason. You know, I mean, and, and significant reason is not well, I'm not using you. And a significant reason is not, um, you know, even your performance isn't great. It's, it's, it's a, it's a disciplinary reason. If, if you, if you're getting into or, a fight in, uh, in gorilla, how about that? That yeah, one? Yeah. That's no, a pretty that, good that, reason. That, that, yeah. Yeah. That's one, that's one, that's one of them. Yeah. Dave, you know, looking, this is, this is my question, right? Looking, looking in hindsight now, right. For AEW with CM Punk and the way that he exited and the way that he entered into WWE in this, in this tremendous way. Would it have been the better decision to keep trying to make it work with him or just keep him at home and keep paying him? Um, yeah, but man, it's millions of dollars a year. Um, yeah. I mean, you could, you could still offset some of it with merchandise. Um, you know, and use them, you know, use them for a pay-per-view every, every, you know, once every quarter or something, don't put them on, you know, TV, I mean, utilize them in that way. The thing is, 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 um, they tried and they tried and they tried. And it, I, I think that once, um, you know, I, Tony, I think once Tony made the call to resign um, and, and not just resign, but give fantastic offers to Adam Page and the Bucks and, yeah. and Omega and bring them back. I think the writing was on the wall at that point. It's not anything of like now, now that they're in for years, we have to get rid of Punk to keep the cohesiveness. It was nothing to do with that. It was just that I think that. I believe that that he expected that uh, because he was the bigger star that he would win the power play. And then it was, you know, and at that point, you know, you make demands and make demands and make demands. And, and at some point, um, you know, it, it was, you know, that whole run of collision and everything, like when he wouldn't let Daniels backstage and, and yeah. some of the other things that happened, it, it was so over the top anyway. But Tony did let him get away with it. Um, but then the thing with, with Jack Perry on, you know, this – biggest show in the history of the company and everything like that and what happened and how it happened and 
that they have a disciplinary committee and there is footage, you know, because there were cameras backstage, we'll never see it. But whatever they saw, it was just, you know, it it takes an incredible amount for them to have fired him. So, I mean, it had to be, yeah. it had to be like, no question. It had to happen. Um, Somebody it, said it, to it, me, they were like, how could Tony do that? I'm like, you, you think that was an easy decision for Tony? I mean, that that's an investment. Was, was, that's was, a was, major investment that you're selling off yeah, to your competition. Yeah. You're and, giving them away. You're, you're, you're giving them your competition. It's going to help your competition for sure. And, um, you know, I mean, at the time they didn't know if WWE would take him, but I mean, over the course, like, even if they didn't take him then over the course of like a year or two or whatever, it's inevitable. It was going to happen. I mean, if you know wrestling, yeah. it's like, even if, even if everyone goes in WWE goes, Oh my God, look what he just did there. We're, and we're, we're great. We're, you know, we're doing great. We, and we don't have any issues and we certainly don't need him. The reality is he was still going to get a chance because that's how wrestling works. And, um, you know, so as far as, um, yeah, no, no, it had to be an incredibly difficult decision to make, and it had to go so far. Because, you know, realistically, it, it, the, the thing that happened in uh, Chicago, that that would have fired, that would have gotten anyone probably but him on the entire roster. You know, I mean, it's maybe him, maybe if Jericho did it, he could have gotten away with it. I don't know. But anyone else that, that would have started a fight in that situation, um, they'd they'd be gone, no questions asked. In the wild stuff. Uh Gary, do you want me to continue doing these? Yeah, why until don't you? we get to your guy? I, I, okay. I, I, I until, think I can until take, you can take I, it over. I can I can take over at, at some point, but keep yeah. Okay, keep got it. Here's a question from Brett. Okay. He said, This is a dumb question, but it's from my dad. So why not? Dave, was there ever a point that Jim Powers filled in for Kane at a what? show? I never heard this. I've never heard of that. <laughs> I don't. I don't Jim that's Bauer? why I asked. I thought maybe this Jim is Powers is like five a... ten and Kane's like six five six six. Yeah, so, yeah. those those are some lifts he had wow. to put on. Yeah, yeah. I've never heard it, and uh, I would just that sounds ridiculous to me. Oh, there we go. There we go. We got that one up. Perfect. I don't. I think John did that, not me. All right. Here's a super was chat he, was, from. Was he even? Was yeah. he even? Were they even around at the same in the same era? I don't, I don't think so. That. They're, they're they're years apart anyway. I don't think so. No, they were like Dave, hey, Jim Powers. Last time I saw Jim Powers yeah. was like ninety six WCW. Right, but he he was out of WWE, you know, by yeah before that. And Kane, I think, wasn't Kane start in um was it the hell ninety seven? So ninety seven, yeah. So I don't even think they yeah. ever even. I don't think it's, um, it's, unless he was uh, Isaac Yankum. Yeah, but I, I don't. You know, I don't. Yeah, I, I mean, I would. It's, it sounds this, this question sounds ridiculous. <laughs> you hear it's that? From his, it's from his dad. Yeah, it's from Brett's dad. It's from his dad. <laughs> this is the this is why I said no, you know, multiple ultimate warrior yeah. questions. Because that's 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 the casual thing Dave, stuff. For once and once and for all, were there multiple ultimate warriors? This is a question <laughs> that the wrestling world has wanted to know for all these years. <laughs> no, no, but there were there were um there were attempts to uh, make people think that there were with uh it was a real Lord of the Jungle when he was the um, ultimate surprise and uh, all that in WCW. Um, Renegade, Renegade Warrior. Renegade. You know? Oh yeah, yeah. Renegade. And, and yeah. Hogan came out and said it is not the Ultimate Warrior. Remember but that first, Hogan, in Hogan's promo. But at first, at first, they wanted you to think it was. I mean, it was a hundred percent. They wanted you to think it was. Oh, those vignettes they, were definitely. What was he was like in the shadow, right? Like they they showed yeah. just the shadow of him, and he was like pumping his arms. Yeah, classic WCW move. Uh, yeah. Here's one. This is a super chat. Dave, would you rather see the Bloodline win a t the tag match on night one? I close it out. So we get Bloodline rules for night two uh, of the main event, or would you rather see it clean, no interferences uh, for the match for night two? Doesn't matter what I want to see. Um, I think that's. I think that's what it's going to be. Um, but yeah, I mean, to me, for for future business, um, if Cody's going to win on night two. I think that he should lose on night one and um, have all, you know, overcome even more odds on night two. Stack I think the adds deck. Drama. it sacks the deck and adds to the drama when he prevails. But also, um, Cody should do the job the night before because once he's champion, um, and it just depends on uh, whether Rock or Roman would be his next, you know, schedule wise, he should do that. He should lose to one of those two to build up a bigger championship match. Cause you know, Cody and, and, and Reigns has to happen again. 
but to me, the biggest match that the company can do is is Cody against Rock with Cody defending the championship. Um, you know, if they do that wherever, you know, if it's next year's WrestleMania or if it's wherever it could be, um, to me, that's the biggest match. That singles match is the biggest match the company can do. And so um, the correct booking to set up that match is Rock pins Cody night one. Yeah, that's right. What's next? I mean, it's amazing. We got three matches, right, out of this? We got Cody Rock, we got Cody uh, Roman, and we got Roman Rock. Yep, yep. I was actually just writing all about how, um, you know, all the thing, all the plans that they had that fell apart ended up being better for them in the long run because they have way more longevity. If it was just Rock and Roman, and they just did their match, um, you know, who's I mean, gonna who's gonna take match. credit for all this business when it's all said and done because of all the changes? Well, what's going to happen, what's going to happen is, is that in history, they're going to say how brilliant they were because they're going to claim that, that this was the idea from the start and that, that rock and Roman Reigns were never going to have a match. Um, and that this was just them manipulating the whole situation. Um, and, and a lot of it, <laughs> yeah. And so, yeah, some of sure. it, sure. <laughs> some, some, and some of it, some of it was too. I mean, the, you know, I mean, again, like why did Cody win the Royal Rumble? I mean, there's a reason Cody won the Royal Rumble and, uh, yeah. you know, so, so, this thing is not, I mean, like when the whole thing was going down, it was like I was seeing it and I heard and everything. And it's like the fan reaction, it, it's, it was like um, it wasn't what they were expecting, but they certainly were like people going like they're trying to screw Cody. It was like, no, this was all about building Cody, you know, yeah. whether it would be later and it was going to be later. You know, I mean, I, I, my, my gut is, is that he was winning the championship very soon after, you know, from whoever. Um, and, um, you know, but, but he was, um, you know, the Royal Rumble win, you know, I mean, it ended up, there was a moment in time where he was going to wrestle Seth Rollins, you know, for a couple of days, that was absolutely there. And that fell apart when, uh, rock decided that, uh, they're going to boo me. I'm going to be a heel. And if I'm going to be a heel, then we need a baby face. And that was Cody. So, you know, that, that the big beneficiary was, uh, Drew McIntyre out of this situation. And he's, he's done very well in that position it's wild a bunch of series of events right it always is but this year more than most yeah yeah, yeah more than most all right we have a reho question what does dave think to the claim about reho being a draw and then it nose dives when she's in the main event i love AEW, but how can they make it more captivating overall so technically some people are main. i've said this over and over and over again okay some people are main eventers and some people are not and when you put people in Riho is not a main eventer. Rio is a great freaking wrestler. Yeah, um, yeah. And you put her on the show in a dramatic match, and she will do. She's not a great ratings draw, but I have seen um, at times what, what she has done is um, she is a draw with younger women. You know, you know, probably in, and and most of the time women wrestlers are not necessarily draws with younger women, but she is, you know, whatever it is. I mean, people kind of um whether they you know see this little woman against these bigger women and and how much fire she shows and how dynamic her stuff is it works but she's not a main eventer and willow nightingale is not you know not a main eventer and and people like that and we've when you see them people who are not when you put a, a match that is not a main event in the main event position it will nosedive especially with aw because and and wwe both for raw for raw i would say not not necessarily Smackdown, Smackdown is a different ratings pattern for probably because it's on network. I'm I'm guessing, but but it just does. You know, like if you put the wrong main event on Raw, which they don't very often because they know, they know this. You know, you if you look, um, most of the time, you know, and, and actually last night was the exception, um, in the sense that they didn't have the giant stars in the main event. And I thought, oh, you know, I mean, luckily it's daylight savings time, which changes the pattern a little bit. But that Jay and um, uh, Nakamura in the main event. Um, I thought that that would be bad, but in the end, you know, as rock goes all over the place. And so I'm sure that they counted on that and I'm sure that they ended up being, you know, right. I'm sure that, that last quarter probably did really well, but, um, you know, you, again, you, you have the, the wrong people in a main event in AEW more than any other company. Um, and yeah, that's, that's what's going to happen. Um, just how it is. All right, from John, this, this information just came out today, so good job with this question, John. 
Uh, Dave, with the NFL playing on Christmas this year, which is on a Wednesday, do you see AEW moving dynamite for that week? That's an interesting question. I don't... Um, um, I would say if they had the ability to do so, um, but if they go to, if they go to Tuesday, they'll be they'll be hurt worse moving to Tuesday, going against NXT, um, than yeah. they will be hurt going against the NFL. So Tuesday is a bad idea. Thursday, um, I don't know. I think switching dates. I think switching dates of the week is is more um is going to hurt more than um the the fact that yeah they're gonna they're gonna take a hit going against the NFL on Christmas Day without a doubt. You know, but it's Christmas just, they'll um, take a hit anyways, just for it being on Christmas, yeah. right? Yeah, of course. Because they're yeah, not the yeah. NFL or the NBA, where that because those where, that's where their Christmas day. is a big where Christmas is a big day. The NBA may take a hit with the NFL though too. Oh yeah, they are definitely going. I mean, you know, it used to be that. Yeah, I'm curious about that. I'm curious didn't, how that's going to play out. Didn't that didn't that just happen last year? Where you know, because yeah, Christmas was always the, the NBA's year. big day, and then yeah. the NBA really got hurt by the NFL this last Christmas, I think. You Wait, know, Christmas the, is the, a Wednesday this year, right? Is that what it yeah. is? That, that's that's right. So they, they, TBS TBS runs the uh, the Christmas Story marathon all day. So they may get so they they may maybe they are getting bumped. Maybe they're going to get moved to the weekend anyway. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the, the ironic thing is the NFL and college football are in a little bit of a, a situation because college football. Uh, the, the, historically they've had Saturdays until a specific time frame, and the NFL wants to edge in on those Saturdays. So the NFL is just going gangbusters on every other sport right now. So, yeah. Uh, all right. Cadillac Carson says, Dave, what was the first match you saw that really got you into watching professional wrestling and why that match? It wasn't a match. It was, it was uh, just watching the television show with my friends and the promos. Um, you know, I mean, I guess the build, you know, for what was coming up at the Cow Palace, which was the key focus of the show, got me interested in some ways and looking at the results and everything. But it wasn't like a, a specific match. You know, I was already I was already into it before I went to my first live show and saw the matches. All right. From, so I, can, I, uh, can I add can I add a follow up to that? OK, because I'm always fascinated. About, what was. Like for me, right? Obviously, it wasn't a match that got me into it. It was more the spectacle of seeing Hulk Hogan and the Ultimate Warrior, you know, 1990, 1989. Exactly. But what was there a match when you were when you were younger that you said, oh, my gosh, like I, I, I see it beyond just on the surface of being a TV show? Because for me, it, it, it was being at SummerSlam 91 and seeing Henning and, and Bret Hart in that IC title match. That was the moment. I, I mean, it's like I woke up. As a kid, I was seven years old or whatever. I was eight years old and I saw this unbelievable display of wrestling. And it was so different than seeing like a Hulk Hogan match. You know, it's where it kind the, of, I mean, like I mean, woke I mean, me up. I mean, I, 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 I watched that match. I thought that match was great, but I didn't think that match was any greater than so many other <laughs> matches that I was watching. Is that, that wild? Yeah. And well, I thought it was, like, I thought like, it was unbelievable. But the thing is, I started watching Japanese wrestling, which was so far above the United States, you know, in, yeah. in, um, I mean, regularly in the early 80s, and I'd seen stuff in the 70s even from time to time, and I'd seen Florida stuff and everything, and I'd seen Ric Flair, you know what I mean, in these incredible matches. And so it's like, it's funny because like, I know that when um, when Ric Flair and Ricky Steamboat did their match at the Meadowlands, so this is, um, I think, 84, and... I just remember like all the magazines were just the greatest match of all time. It was fantastic. And all these fans were just like, never seen anything like it in my life. Oh my God, the greatest match in the history of wrestling. And I watched it and it was like, it's every Ric Flair, Ricky Steamboat match I've seen dozens of times and, and not even the best one, you know, okay, but it so was can like, I tell you something about that. Yeah. Because I'm reading the 89 observers. There's a note. Uh, it's right. It's right before the clash of champions match where you had a, a report from a house show and you said that the report from the house show said way better than the Chicago match nearing six star territory or something like that. Was that and the that Landover? Was, uh, it may have been, but the it was Landover, just that it was a house I, show match. The Landover house show match uh, to me, when I saw it, I thought that was uh, a different level. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, you know, they were the thing is, they were all great. I remember seeing like clips of, you know, Greensboro match and I got uh, the old um, all that old mid-Atlantic uh, house show footage stuff and 
the stuff with Flair and Steamboat every night. It was just incredible when when you know when Flair was younger and 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 he was more versatile and the crowds were so much hotter. I mean, it's really something to see. Um, so, um, but yeah, I mean, this um, you know, it, it's 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 still. You know, I mean, I, I don't know that I ever saw anything in the United States at the level of uh, Saruta and Tenru. You know, when those guys were really going at it, um, or um, I mean, the first time I was, I mean, again, when I first started watching the Japanese wrestling, um, you know, and part of it also is, is that the TV show had all the main events and our TV was all squash matches. So of course it's going to be way better and you have like higher quality of wrestlers. Yeah. But, um, you know, I mean, those classic matches at, at, at Budokan Hall, you know, I mean, it, it's just different level, you know, it was just, just way different level from anything in the United States at the time. I mean, I, I was just white writing about, um, um, you know, cause your thing is in 91, I was just writing a bio today or yesterday, actually, and a little bit this morning on Chigusa Nagayo. And I remember, you know, when I saw her for the first time and the all Japan women for the first time, and they were even, they were even better than the guys. And, you know, it's, it's hard to, to say, but I mean, I remember, and guys would admit that some guys would, would, you know, I mean, Bruce Brody would, you know, but. Um, most of them, I, a lot of the guys just thought, ah, it's women. It's not, they're not really wrestlers or anything. They're 135 pounds, blah, blah, blah. But, but I just remember Bruiser Brody going like they're, they're better than the guys. And, um, you know, and I started watching them and, and, uh, yeah, during that, that crush gals and jumping bomb angels and, you know, era, it was phenomenal, phenomenal stuff. Just, just, I mean, our women, the women wrestling in the United States, which has just improved by leaps and bounds in recent years. They're just coming up to the level of those women from 40 years ago. And they're still not wow. at the level of the women from, from 35 years ago. All right. From card pros, any word oh, on 30 where... years, 30 years ago, 30 years ago, any word on where Suzu Suzuki is signing and is she the best 21 year old since Ray Mysterio? Oh, she's great. Um, I like Azumi too. Who's even younger, but, but she got so much poise. Suzu Suzuki, as far as, as of everyone's belief a few days ago is staying with stardom. You know, I mean, it could change, but I think it's, uh, you know, that, that was, that was the belief I've asked about it specifically with many people. And, and, um, yeah, even though she's not coming on the, uh, the, uh, Philadelphia show, as far as I know, or she hasn't been announced yet, but the belief is that she's staying with stardom. All right. From betrothed. And this person did pay for this question, so I'm going to ask it. Can you ask Dave why he blocks so many people on X? I would actually disagree and say I don't block, block enough about ninety nine percent. I don't block. I don't block. I, you you have you have to be really disrespectful for me to block. Um, I mean it's it's it it really takes a lot. Um, and um, yeah, I mean most people say I should be blocking a lot more. Uh, supposedly he said he disagreed with something and wasn't disrespectful and boom, gone. You know, sometimes you just get caught in, which is why I almost never get in arguments on Twitter with people I enjoy. Cause you know, what's the line of, uh, you know, sometimes people from a distance can't tell who from who, like I just, 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 I would just suggest don't get in arguments on Twitter and you, I blog. would, I would not do it if, if, if it's being disrespectful, unless it's, um, you know, just something, I mean, I, 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 I hate to say it cause now he's going to get offended, but if it's ultimately at a level of stupidity that I just didn't feel like dealing, dealing with at a moment, I could do that, but that's even rare. I mean, it's very much just, and I don't even block people who are disrespectful right away because I always have this heart thinking that like, well, you know, um, there, there are people who were very disrespectful to me and this is a very rare but they have in time become very good friends with me. So, and, and uh, because of that, because of that, it's like I give everyone far more rope to hang themselves than, than in 98% of the cases they deserve because of the other 2% where it's proven that, uh, you know, being nice does help. And they are people who, you know, also will learn, you know, and we both, you know, you both learn. You know what I mean? But people who I, I do, I do will, I will say that people who, if you discuss something and give them facts and they just refuse to learn, it's not even, that's, that's a waste of everyone's time, not just mine, but everyone that's on Twitter looking through this stuff. It's just like, 
you know, time, life's too valuable to be arguing with people who, you know, like if they say something and I go, okay, here's the facts. And it's just like, if then they, then they just go and, and completely ignore it because, you know, some moron has told them something different. It's like, okay, no, no time for you. All right. I don't think you actually know the answer to this, but I'll, I'll, I'll post it from Matthew. How old is Espresso and what breed is he? Was he a rescue? I think you can answer some of that. He's, he's a, I think he's a miniature pincher. And um, I don't know, seven or eight in that range. I don't know. You, Garrett, you I, know. I've known, I've known him since. I mean, you've known him since he was. 2018, 2018 probably was when I first met him. Okay. 2018, so that's six years ago. So, yeah. I mean, when you met him, he was he was only a couple months old. So that would make him six and a half. Yeah. Okay. There you go. Okay. All right. Where <laughs> this is funny. Where does Dave have U.S. Express ranked all time? <laughs> On tag teams? Not, <laughs> yeah. not, 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 not in the top 50, even though they're, they're a good team. But if I, I mean, if I had to make a list of the 50 greatest tag teams of all time, um, they wouldn't be in the top 50. No. Um, top 100, probably. When um, Spivey which, re replaced Wyndham, you had a nickname for that version of the team. Do you remember what that is? I don't remember what it is, but I just oh remember God. that was a nickname. When Spivey yeah, replaced yeah. Wyndham. Yeah, yeah, because it went way down. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> Barry Wyndham was phenomenal. And Sp Spivey ended up being good, but but he was still pretty green at that point. You know, I mean, really all Spivey had going for him was that he was, you know, tall and had blonde hair and looked like a guy you could fill in the Barry Windham shoes in every way, but the, <laughs> but the wrestling, I suppose. I think it was like the boredom express or something like that. If I, if I can, if I can, could be. but this is when you were a little bit, you were a little bit feistier in, in, in the newsletter back then. Yeah. He was very um, feisty in the newsletter. <laughs> <laughs> my, uh, cousin, okay. my cousin was a subscriber. He would bring them over and I would read them, you know? Oh yeah. It's the best. It's the best. Uh, from Omega Man, is AEW the best thing to happen to WWE? Yes, <laughs> I absolutely. Agree. It, it forced them. It forced them. It forced them to improve. Yes, no doubt about it. Um, and, and you know, if there, I if go there back. was no if if there was no AEW, we would have a very singular style of wrestling that would not have evolved. Um, and because of AEW, it it had to get more. Um, they had to concentrate more on other aspects and, and compete. Yeah, which definitely the greatest thing for WWE. I remember doing the podcast, and I think we were very newly on uh, F4W, the fight game podcast that I do with John LaRocca, and uh, we may not have been on yet, but our thesis statement was we want to cover AEW from the beginning very closely because the hope is that it – also, at the same time of, of have just being good wrestling, it also kicks WWE's butt and gets them in gear. And then you have two good promotions. And that's yep. kind of what happened. That, that is what happened. But but when that happened... <laughs> well, AEW suffered a little bit, for sure. It's really yeah. tough. For, it's really tough for AEW when you got the number one promotion that's that's this hot. It is, it's just really, really tough. You know, I mean, and, you can put on, you know, it just is. Yeah. And I guess similarly, outside of, you know, someone passing away, uh, is is Cody going to WWE like the worst thing that happened to AEW? You know, him staying was going to be difficult, though. Um, but him showing up in WWE um, was, yes, I would say it's a singular move. It was the worst thing. Of, of, of all the things that happened, you're going to say, what's the worst thing as far as hurting AEW and helping WWE? It's Cody because Cody became, you know, night in, night out. He's the biggest star in the company because the other, you know, the, the other two or, or whatever are very much part time. I mean, he is the guy and uh, you take him out of the mix and they would still probably be doing good. And, and he wasn't in that original bloodline feud with Sami Zayn. But once that thing hit, ran its course. Cody's really carried the ball. So, yes, um, Cody's really smart when it comes to certain, you know, the 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 idea of playing superstar wrestler. Boy, is he great at that. Yeah. Uh, just to note to the audience, uh, we're going to stop the Super Chats at RVD is cool, who just sent in the last one that we're going to be able to get to. We're going to try and rip through the rest of these uh from lone wolf andrew this might also be for you because i'm not sure i know what he's talking about 
Did anyone catch Punk's joke when he said, my mouth still works well, we're not on Netflix, and April knows what I'm talking about? Andrew, is that Yeah, like that was a... in the beginning. That was like what, one of the first things he said. I, 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 I thought that that might have something to do with something that, that she is doing. Uh, April, of course, being his wife, um, former AJ Lee. I thought it might be something that, that she was doing um, that might be related to Netflix. I don't know. Yeah, I, I, wasn't I don't know. Exactly I sure I, what that joke was about. I I mean, if you're going to take it just like quickly, I would take it like, oh, wow, they're going to they're going to be get a little bit more edgy on Netflix. Maybe there was a conversation. Maybe he was reprimanded for something he had said before. I don't know. I found that edgy. I found that in this entire show last night to be really I mean, I watched all three hours live. I haven't done that in, in a very long time. And it, it, I was captivated. I was interested. I was watching it. I, I thought the Rhea segment was good, too. So I, I think they're working their way somewhere to something here. And it seems like they're going to become more of an edgy product. I think it's fine if done well. I mean, we saw the the uh, the holy S chance, right, that we're getting censored every couple seconds. Uh, you know, that was the main <laughs> reason why they wanted to go TV 14. That's the fans, though. That's so the Lone fans, Wolf, but that was WWE's reasoning. So I, I think Lone Wolf's question is, you know, is this alluding to that? I would say maybe okay. a little bit, yeah. <laughs> so this is where my head went, and that may say something about me, but Lone Wolf tried to answer us. Joke explained. He's saying he's good at oral sex. Hmm. 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 That that's what I thought he was talking about. So uh maybe, maybe not. And maybe uh, all right. And maybe. Um, all right, let's go. Uh, Chris Cage, Chris Cage 2X with Naomi using the heat seeker and Rhea using the better than you line. Are these clues as to MJF defecting from AEW to WWE? No. No, and is no. there injury time added on to MJF's contract currently? If he is under contract, they would have the right to, yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, okay. Uh, Hang on here. Do you think Kosha, Ir Kosha Irby, is that correct? Kosha um, Irby. Will, will have a good impact on AEW moving forward. He's quite the resume, and I hope he can make changes to live events. Oh, that's the, the COO? COO. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, hope so. Hope so. I mean, time will tell. He's been there for, uh, you know, I mean, they just sent out the release today for reasons I don't know because... They confirmed his name to me, you know, in January or in late March. So it's been a, he's been there a couple of months. Um, I know that it was going to take time. I mean, the one thing I was told is that, like, when it came to the live events, because so many of them were booked ahead of time, that it would take time to transition to his vision, which, you know, they were hoping would be better. And time will tell. You know, the, the problem, though, is. It's 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 like. There are some cities and some markets, and I mean, when I did that that pay per view breakdown, state by state, and 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 things like that, it really hit me that there are some states that AEW is really popular in, and some states that it's not, and it's almost like there's some of these states you should avoid because when they go to those states for live events, they don't do well. So, um, but you know, they did. Um, there's still a situation where. Um, it's not it's not a hot product and 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 Cochet, um you know he he is not in the position to make it a hot product unless he comes up with great promotional ideas on a local market basis and um you know and that's involving wrestlers with the community and and things like that and and i haven't seen any of that yet but um you know time will tell and that's easy to say but it's much harder to do i don't even know how you do it now because the nature of um the nature of local media is is and and you know think local radio and things like that it's so different from when i learned watching you know people in different sports operate when i was in college and how they locally promoted sports and then later in the 90s um watching you know zane's ideas you know because he pitched every zane Breslov pitched everything to me and and just told me you know how he promoted concerts and how he promoted WCW and all those things and and um you know since he's been gone I mean there's been nobody who's who's 
done anything that way. But at the end, even with Zane, you know, I remember the last couple of years of WCW, you know, I mean, he had all those ideas and he had all the local media behind it and everything like that, you know, the local DJs and everything. And, and it wasn't working anymore because it was WCW and the product was cold. There's nothing you can do to sell tickets to a cold product. And when you have a super hot product, you really don't need a great promoter to do it because the TV does it <laughs> on its own. Yeah. All right. From Frank, I'm a Juilliard trained actor in New York. I, it used to be a lot easier to work your way into the business. What would be your advice for me? I mean, the first thing to do is just go to your indies, your local indies, and volunteer to do all kinds of work. And if you want to be a wrestler, train to be a wrestler there and, um, you know, uh, get a look. I don't mean steroids, but, you know, just get some, you know, get your, your, your body in shape and train really hard and all that and um, work on your promos and, and travel and try to get on um, shows that are, you know, like especially if you, there's, there's the thriller shows or something like that and, do, and just do something to stand out. Um, cause that's the people, the people who stand out on the Indies, um, are the ones that, you know, whether it's, and, and, and it can be talking. Um, but the weird thing, I mean, on the Indies, it's really more about the wrestling, but when it comes to the big companies, the talking is so much more important. And then you've got that problem that you've got these guys that are great wrestlers coming up that are not that great talking and it kind of stifles their growth. And it's like, I, I know like when, when AW started bringing these guys in that were very athletically talented, I remember I would just think like, give them a freaking promo coach because, <laughs> you know, especially now because we're, we're freaking loaded with talented um, athletic wrestlers, but the ones we're going to make to the top are the ones who are going to be able to talk. All right, let's get to the rest of these. Uh, Broadway Joe. I feel like I'm taking crazy pills over this WWE praise. The two hottest angles for WWE going into WrestleMania are for matches that aren't happening. <laughs> yeah, Rod against Cody. Yeah. <laughs> but it's going to happen. I, I would I would resume afterwards. So, uh, you know, and and so, may, you know, maybe Mania is not. I mean, this is what, what's, what's interesting this year. Last year, I mean, like Mania often is the end of stories. And this year, it's going to probably be the end of the Cody Rhodes, Roman Reigns story, but it's also going to be the beginning of the post Cody Rhodes story. So, um, mm -hmm. which is actually a good thing that you are, you are blowing off a world championship story in theory that you've built for two years, but at the same time, it's not like, okay, we've done the story. Now let's start scratch. I mean, we're, you know, the theory is to come out of that thing with, um, you know, not just, not just for Cody, but for, for everyone come out with a bunch of new new stories and angles and start the you know start start building new stuff yeah all right dave have you ever had a drink with rick flair N um not alcohol no you know um, who you have had a drink with though um as far as as far as have i had a drink of juice with rick flair yes but never alcohol <sighs> You did have a drink of alcohol with Wale. Wale, Wale, yeah. And Wale, the, the, <laughs> Wale, the mania. Miss Wale, yeah, Wale <laughs> mania. Okay, two more. With the success of the Iron Claw, do you think a movie or series about the Hart family, or oh, and Stampede Wrestling would be feasible? Uh, yeah, sure. You know, um, just someone to to do it. There's. Uh, very unique and incredible stories on that. Although still out of, if it, if it was me and I had to pick one story to do a movie on when it comes to that, it would be the Dynamite Kid, you know, rather than the Hart family. I just think that there's, I have so many scenes in my head of different things that happened, you know, with, with Dynamite. Um, and, and it, you know, it would obviously involve WWE and it obviously involved life after wrestling and things like that. But I think it would be a absolutely gripping you know, story. And it's not a, it would not be a story that portrays him in a great way, but at the same time, you know, it would portray him, you know, his wrestling as being, um, you know, um, you know, so important as far as the future style of pro wrestling, you know, but, but the dynamite kid as a person, uh, would, would not, uh, at all, you know, it, it'd be a real Jake LaMotta, but worse, but much worse. 
um, type of a movie. But yes, I, I always thought like, like a dynamite kid movie, um, you know, with Brett as one of the key figures in that movie, you know, that, that um, just this whole thing of, you know, Brett being, you know, dynamite being so much better than Brett, you know, when they started and then all of a sudden, you know, by the time dynamite his career is over and they're, they're essentially the same age. Dynamite's actually younger than Brett by a year that, that, you know, dynamite's career is over. He's done in wrestling before Brett ever even hits his stride. And then Brett goes on to be, you know, one of the iconic superstars of the business mm -hmm. dynamite, you know, who was better, younger and, you know, all that, um, ends up in a wheelchair. You know, I, I just, um, I've, I've, I've always thought that like, um, a movie that, that movie could be, uh, really, it probably never happened. Um, but I, I've always thought that that's a movie that could be really good. All right. Last one here. This is from RVD is cool. Dave, I'm going to my first ever WrestleMania. How big is this event compared to other WrestleManias with this, uh, this tag match? I mean, I, I feel the biggest WrestleMania, um, from a mainstream standpoint, I think that it might be the maybe the the third or the third biggest, maybe. Um, the first one will always be the biggest because the the grip it had on the country that day was unbelievable. But I think as far as viewership goes, more people are going to watch this WrestleMania is at least in the United States by far than any WrestleMania in history. And I think it's the I mean, I feel it's bigger than the Rock and John Cena and the Donald Trump WrestleManias, which were the biggest pay-per-view WrestleManias of all time. You know, the two rock and scene and the Trump and the Trump one are the three biggest. And I feel that this is um, between the two days and everything like that and the company being much hotter. I think this is this is uh, much bigger than those. Pop culture wise, you and I talked about WrestleMania, the first one kind of being uh, the, the biggest one. Three and five. How would you compare three and five to what we are seeing right now? Three was real big. Um I think that because of, you know, I mean, it's, it's hard to say. We wouldn't be able to judge this one until it's over and then probably in 20 years. Because one of the things with three was, three was very, very big the day it happened. Um, but it grew bigger, you know, because they decided to, you know, make that the, the story that it was the greatest show of all time and the greatest match of all time and all that. So if they decide afterwards to say that Cody Rhodes and Roman Reigns is that for 20 years, it will be that because that's how, you know, that's how they will write their history. So it's kind of up to them, you know, as far as like how they, uh, you know, in the, high, the, the, the future. Um, as far as five, I mean, you did have the great storyline going in and everything like that. But, um, you know, they're, it's uh, the day of, I feel this is bigger than that one, than five the day of, but, uh, um yeah i would say that i mean five was really really big too though yeah you know there's a 1984 observer where you basically lay out hogan and andre for 87 and you're like yeah this I is exactly what that. needs to happen this is what needs to happen and voila you make a whole bunch of money yeah 1984 well that wasn't that wasn't um that wasn't being a genius or anything i just thought that was really uh, you know that was really obvious i mean i just remember in the awa you know when 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 hogan was really hot in the awa before he ever went to wwf i was like like the big money here is freaking turning andre heel and going against hulk hogan in all these cities and it would draw like crazy you know so um but they never did it because they always kept andre as a baby face on you know and that a lot of that was vince you know vince's father vince's father was always you know andre has to be a baby face when andre was let loose i was watching andre in new japan as a heel I just thought that he was so much more entertaining and interesting and could have much bigger matches, you know, and he was more serious of a wrestler as a heel because he was doing the singles match with, with Inoki for the championships and things like that. And while he did do, you know, matches with Ric Flair and Harley Race on occasion, you know, and maybe even Terry Funk for the world title, um, you know, it was like it, it, they I, I didn't find it as serious because I think that everybody knew that somehow he wasn't going to win. Um, whereas with Inoki, because of the way Inoki was pushed and everything like that, it was like Andre could win and Inoki could win, and most likely to be a double count out. 
<laughs> Andrew, do you have any last thoughts before we get out of here? No, this was a blast. I had a great time. So I love uh, the Q and A's that you do on Observer Radio. So for me, this was like I'm sitting back and I'm just listening. Yeah, no, it's a, it a lot of fun. I'm glad folks got to ask the questions that they that they get to ask. Dave, appreciate the super chats. Appreciate everyone tuning in, not only live on YouTube but also listening to the podcast version of this show. So I want to say thanks to Dave. Thanks for doing this. I know you are in uh, you're already in in heavy Observer writing time. Oh, yeah. And uh, oh, yeah. you, made, you made some time for us today. So uh, thanks to Dave. And also for Andrew, I am Double G. We will see you when we see you. Peace out.